Resolve 18.5 just came out in beta and there is a new fancy little thing in Fusion called USD. What does what does that mean? What is that? It's universal scene description and it's really cool 3D goodness. I think it's the start of uh, something very, very cool inside of Fusion. Let's take a look at kind of an overview of how you might use it at this point in Fusion. Here we have a shot of a flying saucer because, well, I like sci-fi. And, you know, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna put some 3D stuff in, it's guns to be a flying saucer. Okay, it's guns to be. All right. So is this the most realistic thing in the whole world? No. Is it pretty cool for the amount of effort I put into it? I think so. Let's take a look at how it's made. And if you're interested in making something like this and learning a little bit more about compositing, we go into more detail on this comp in our advanced compositing class right here. And you can download all of the assets that you need to follow along. It's available now at groundcontrol.film. But let's just let's just have a, have a look, see, shall we? First thing we're gonna do is start with the background and I'm merging just a still that I took on my phone and transforming this and putting it over the background just to kind of crop it like this. Then we're color correcting it to look a little nicer. And that's our background. For the foreground, we're starting with this flying saucer model that I made in Blender very quickly. It's kind of fun. And we're doing some fancy things and adding some lighting to it and placing it in the scene. All of this 3D stuff uses the new USD nodes in Fusion. So what is a USD? A USD is short for Universal Scene Description. And without getting too technical, it's a very nice format to take a 3D mesh or a 3D scene complete with lights and textures and all kinds of fancy things and move it in between programs. So it's sort of like an FBX if you're familiar with that, but it has a little more features and at least in my limited experience, is a little bit easier to have things actually work out of the box. It even includes materials and things like that. Oh, it's just very nice to open something up and have it work. So let's take a look at these USD nodes here. If you're familiar with the 3D nodes in Fusion, these should make a lot of sense. There's a loader which just opens the actual USD scene. Just a little background on how this is made. This was just modeled in Blender. And then I just went up to File, Export, Universal Scene Description, like this and I saved it as a USDC. I left everything as default, and I don't have any textures on this. This is just a really shiny material. And when you make a U loader, here under U loader, under file name, you can hit browse and go and find your USD file and hit open and it will open it up and it should come in pretty nicely. So we have our USD file here. And anytime that you wanna see a USD, I'll just copy and paste this so that we can kind of talk about it. Anytime that you want to actually have a USD show up in your render, you have to use a U render node. So U render like that. And now if we hit two on the keyboard, this is actually giving us a render of this USD file and not just a preview of it like this. So this works a lot like the normal 3D nodes that you have to have like a mesh and then you have to have a renderer, that kind of thing. There's also some other USD nodes. If you just type USD, it'll bring all those up. Uh, you can make your own like shape. So U shape and here we can pick, you know, cone, capsule, cube, cylinder, that kind of stuff, plane, even a torus. And so you can't really like do any 3D modeling, but you can kind of build stuff out of primitives if you want to right here in Fusion. You can even adjust the material. You can put a texture into it. And there's quite a few material properties built right into this U shape. So that's how you can add kind of multiple different things. But yeah, anything that you have that's 3D has to go into this renderer. And that's what the viewer is actually going to see. In the renderer node, over here in the inspector, there are a bunch of different options. You can pick your renderer type. For now, they just have the storm renderer, as well as some options here. If you guys wanna learn more about these, let me know and I'll make another video. But if we want to add some lighting to this, we have to actually add this to a scene of some kind. And we do that by using a U merge node, which is just for USDs. And here's where you can mix this with lights and cameras and that kind of thing. So let's make a camera. I'll hit shift space bar to bring up our select tool and I'll type UCAM. That'll bring up our camera and I'll take the output of this and put that into our U merge. And now here in the renderer, I can select my camera as U camera two. And our camera is a little bit too close. So I can select this U merge and hit one on the keyboard to bring it up here on my left viewer. And I'll make sure to select the camera down here and then grab my camera and just move it back here in my preview. And now we can see our 3D mesh. If we want to add a light to the scene, we can do that. There are a few different kinds of lights. There's disc lights, dome lights, distant lights, that kind of thing. So something like a distant light would be like a sun. So we'll pipe this in there. And you aren't going to see any difference in the lighting unless you go up here for the preview and turn it off from camera light and onto scene lights. And now you can actually see what's happening with this distant light. If we go to transform and move this around, we can see this lighting changing while we move this light. So that works. 
Same thing is true with the renderer. If we select this renderer, we need to make sure that our lighting is seen. And now the lighting is actually going to show up on our mesh. The other thing we can do is we can use image-based lighting. So I'll just get rid of this distant light and I'm gonna bring up U dome light and hit add and put this into the merge. And it's going to, by default, load kind of a beach picture, which is gonna give us those nice reflections and it's gonna start looking really cool. So that's a really nice thing. And once you have this kind of looking the way that you want, you can take this renderer and you can merge it over anything in 2D as a 2D layer. The other thing we might do is adjust this 3D mesh or adjust our camera to kind of frame this a little better. So I could take this U loader and put in a transform by typing UXF. So basically everything, we have a loader, we have a transform, we have a camera, a merge, and a light, and those all go to a renderer. This works very similarly to our normal 3D tools as well as the particles here in Fusion. But I could take this transform node and I can do things like scale this and rotate it however I want to kind of match whatever I want to do in my scene. So this is basically how I have this set up here. I'll just kind of disable all this stuff for now. Here we have our USD just being lit and rendered. For the dome light, I did use a 360 shot that I recorded myself of this environment. I made this with a 360 camera and that's going to help with the lighting. Make sure that that's realistic. You can even see a little old Casey just hunkering down there but that kind of helps to fit this into the environment. The nice thing is that we're here in Fusion and we can adjust this further to match. And so I've color corrected this up a little bit, just gained it up. And I've also drawn a mask around the top of this and brightened up the top a little bit just so it matches with the sky a little better. And then I did a couple things to the edges because the edges are kind of not the best with this renderer, at least in the little bit that I've used it. And so I've added a little blur just to kind of take the harshness off. And I've also added a matte control that just blurs the edges and shrinks them in a little bit. So now that just makes those edges a little nicer. And now we have our flying saucer moving over our orchard. And I just animated the transform for this saucer right here, this transform right here. I'm moving the translation and the rotation. And look at this, it's rendering in real time and it's pretty darn quick, it's pretty cool. So again, I mean, not the most photorealistic, highest quality renderer, but dang, like some pretty cool results. And you can have some real fun with this. And I know that they're gonna be making it better in the future. There's a lot of things to be excited about for USDs, including additional renderers and things that we'll be able to plug in, I'm sure. There might be more support for different AOVs. Those are like render passes. Far we have color as well as depth which is pretty neat. If you have a complex scene, you can kind of get a depth map from it really easily. So yeah, pretty cool little scene. I know I know you're having tons of fun messing with USDs here in the future. What do you think about all of this? What's exciting? What's not exciting? What's on your wish list for USD implementation? Well, that's a big word in Fusion. Hey, and if you want to learn a little bit more about compositing and fancy things in Fusion, whoosh, we have a course for that. It's called Pro Compositing and VFX in Fusion. It's available now at groundcontrol.film. Thanks for hanging with me. I hope that your saucers are floaty and <laughs> realistic. Flying saucers. Do people even call them flying saucers anymore? I think that was a thing down back in like the 30s. Like, oh, we have a race of robots coming here on our flying saucers.